टाइम फॉर फ्यू क्वेश्चंस या बी ब्रीफ योर क्वेश्चंस so are you trying to say that uh, if we had information stored in more complex molecules then uh, it could not have survived evolution so there might have been living matter but it not, could not have survived no. evolution it's possible that's all i say the more complex you make something the more sensitive it is to changes huh? now it's some chemists as you if you ask this question you probably know that some chemists are trying to in, to increase mm -hmm. peter schulz and people like that adding another base a totally synthetic one making it do something in an organism this is it must be done it's interesting just to understand because that is also what science does it has a question it has a solution and they okay what would happen if we do this this will give us new knowledge and so there's tinkering with matter to okay we change a bit we see what comes out will tell us new things but i think that probably the simpler the more stable so that four letters two ways of getting together is the simplest i don't think say it's the only way but evolution was a long process like when manfred eigenwein said you start along this you begin with your you do to dig the road you do open the road you don't go back to look again so you take what you have you go this you go this way you just try out Professor Jacob was calling that molecular tinkering. Just try out, you tinker with it, and some things are a bit better thermodynamically, and others are less good, and so that's the way you go ahead. It's not a star. It's not a direct road. It's a very complicated road with many turns and many rivers to cross, many uh, holes not to fall in. Sometimes you fall in, <laughs> and so. Yeah, it's. That's all right. <laughs> we need people who are not chemists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I was thinking, uh, do you think there is a need for a uh, kind of a periodic table of molecules to understand? A, a need for what? For Just like a periodic table of atoms. Uh -huh. there, do you think you need a periodic table or some kind of general rule for molecules uh, to understand the supramolecular chemistry? Say, for example, understand the, uh, the general rule of the like, organizations like this. Why? Yeah. No. Uh, nothing is as fundamental as the elements yes. in the universe, because these are everywhere. Uh, we're the same. But you are right in some ways. Let's say you have a bow custom. You have a, like a Lego set, huh? and for instance, the Lego set, which has pieces which are molecules able to bind metal cations. And the set of middle cations. These are two Lego sets, where one knows basic properties. One knows that this one wants to make a linear form, the other one tetrahedral, the other one or octahedral, the other one a cubic, and so on. So you can play with those. So that is a sort of. Uh, it's not a table, but it's a sort of a, a, a play, uh, a play a case. Bokas and what is that in English? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering you touched upon thermodynamics in the context of uh, molecular evolution. I was wondering if kinetics comes into play at all. Should we factor that in? Oh, sure, sure, sure. To That's what a extent? very good question. Yes, it's a good question, but it's a simple answer. It's very difficult, and it's yeah. I sh maybe I should have at least said a word. It's quite clear that kinetics are very important, and especially for for us, we are unstable objects. We all depend on kinetics of reactions, the way things diffuse in a cell, the reactions which occur, the way a product, the rate at which it goes somewhere from one position to another one. So we, yeah, and for instance, something which has to be factored in. All I told you, chemically, was uh, equilibrium thermodynamics. We are out of equilibrium, as in, so life is an out of equilibrium system. So this has to be put in. Yeah, so uh, it was a wonderful, amazing lecture. So uh, I, uh, you already mentioned about the evolution from matter to life to uh, thought, thinking process, and uh, thinking uh, being. So, and uh, you said that you don't know what is ahead. So I was just wondering that your comment a little bit more on that, that what could be more, uh, you know, 
a futuristic thing beyond I thinking. I don't know. <laughs> I cannot know. <laughs> Maybe, you know, okay. That becomes science fiction. But science fiction has often been realized after some time. If you can make a brain which has the double number of cells, who knows what that brain is going to do. But the thing is that we are still stuck in our universe. So I don't know, it's uh, maybe more limited than just anything. And I discussed that a lot with uh, Christian de Duve, who was a famous biologist, who got the Nobel Prize for uh, endosomes, li lysosomes. And um, we discussed that. And in fact, you know, the periodic table is a periodic table. That's the way it is. I already mentioned a carbon-carbon bond is a carbon-carbon bond anywhere. Anywhere. Of course, if you are on Venus, where it's very hot, CC is not stable. Maybe SiO is stable. Silicon oxygen might be stable. If you are on a planet where it's very cold, you may not need uh, maybe one hydrogen bond and two hydrogen bonds in place and two and three for having an uh, information system. But the molecules will be the same. They are, their properties are that. The way they act in the environment, what they do, what they form, the kinetics, what they can build up, will depend on conditions. But they will be, have the same properties. You will construct, if you are living on a planet million light years away, you will be a chemist using the same pieces. Now, I'm sorry to say that because it bothers me. It reduces enormously the diversity of what you might expect. And it sounds dogmatic. Science cannot be dogmatic. But, okay, I have no better thing for, maybe we find something else. Maybe quantum physics will tell us other things which we don't not any, know anything about, which always is so strange. Maybe all, all the matters will be connected at some point and uh, that will not no longer be a discrete uh, species, disconnected uh, beings. Yeah, in some ways we are already. Here, sitting in this room, is not being disconnected. You are connected. Huh? And if you give a talk, you are not disconnected. You are connected with other people sitting there. You yeah. can look at them and you react to them and so on. Okay. Thank you. The we last can question. Talk about it. Uh, one molecule which I did not see in your slide is water. Is yes. it a molecule, super molecule, or a super molecule? Oh, that's a good question, but I will not. This gives me an occasion to say something a little bit about water. You know, when you talk to people sort of in the streets and uh, tell them that uh, molecules are doing life and all that, say, again, one of these crazy scientists who thinks that love is an affair of molecules. No, incidentally, it is an affair of molecules. But let's leave that other side. <laughs> so, what about water? Water, a single water molecule cannot boil, it cannot freeze, okay? It's a water, isolated water molecule. If you are an isolated water molecule, that's it. You don't know what is possible otherwise. Okay, you may explore what you might do, okay? A glass of water can boil and freeze. What's the difference? The glass of water is molecules plus supramolecular interactions. So by going one step in complexity, new properties emerge which were not there before. Now, all I can sort of not con yeah, convince myself of is that life thinking is so complicated that when we look at it from our perspective now, we say, oh, impossible. How can it be? But if you look at the point that making things, putting them together, making things more and more complex brings emerging properties and say, okay, one day we will understand how these properties can emerge from these objects which bind together. We can already say better than just boiling or uh, uh, boiling or freezing. We can have molecules which have optical properties, which have mechanical properties and so on, just because they assemble. But it's just to, to say that water is, of course, very important. We know that it's one of the most important molecules. I mentioned it once. When you go from adenine to guanine, you need some water. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, but you know, you could imagine, although the purposes are different, on a cool planet, maybe there's liquid ammonia. Well, I don't know exactly what happens in liquid ammonia. In fact, there's a project I wanted to start at some stage to try to do chemistry, not just having liquid ammonia as a solution to dissolve sodium and stuff like that, but to do a chemistry in liquid ammonia and try to build up complex molecules and look at what they do in liquid ammonia. Could be interesting. Yeah. So, water is very important. Thank you. And that gave me the occasion to say a little bit more about the fact that the increasing complexity brings new features which don't exist at the level below. In fact, I'm not a reductionist. It's not saying that you reduce love to molecules, but with other molecules, you don't have it. So it's a deduction. It's coming out of it. It's emerging. It's not reducing. With that, uh, let's thank uh, Professor Len for the magnificent talk. Yeah. So may I request Professor Ganesh to present a memento on behalf of all of us.